Hi, in my previous tutorial video on op amp voltage noise where I used my HP 35660A dynamic signal analyzer here to uh, measure the noise floor of uh, some op amps, or the power spectral uh, density really, of some op amps. And I mentioned that uh, I might investigate actually upgrading this thing uh, because its noise floor is not great. I mean, we're talking about, uh, you know, in the order of uh, 22 uh, nanovolts per root hertz uh, noise floor of this thing at one kilohertz there. So not very spectacular. So I uh, talked about the possibility of um, opening this thing up, have a look inside and see what uh, op amps and uh, components are used in the front end there and see if I can maybe replace them with some uh, modern, more modern ones really, you know, designed for ultra, ultra low noise performance and see if I could maybe uh, do a drop in replacement for some of those op amps perhaps uh, to increase the performance of this uh, DSA, it's certainly possible and I do have the service manual for this thing but unfortunately it doesn't actually tell you on it. It's got full schematic and PCB overlay but it doesn't have a bomb reference and the schematic doesn't actually tell you which particular op amp is used on the front end which is really annoying so I'm going to have to actually open this thing up, uh, take out the main board which I didn't do in a previous video where I uh, actually repaired this thing didn't take out that analog board so I thought I'd take it out have a look see which uh, chips used in it and well go from there so this video is more of just like a, uh, a documenting uh, reference for myself really to uh, uh, document the uh, noise floor um, as it stands here on this thing uh, the original condition and then uh, look at the parts used and then if we do the upgrade then we have uh, to see if we can improve the performance of it now for the reference measurements of the noise floor in this thing, I've got channel 1 range fixed to uh, minus 51 dB volts RMS, that is the lowest range, it's uh, 4 millivolts uh, peak voltage range on the input, so that's all fixed. Uh, I'm measuring the uh, power spectra, uh, spectral density of this thing, and um, as the previous video I actually made, I noticed I made the mistake of... Um, the vertical units here instead of volts RMS per roots hertz I actually used volts per roots hertz volts per root hertz and that gave me a figure before of around 31.4 whereas I should be using volts RMS per root, root hertz so that's what I'll use as the reference here and at one kilohertz there my marker frequency this is over a frequency span of uh, 1.6 kilohertz there um, and uh, well, basically, if you enter 1 kilohertz as the span, then it uh, actually says, oh, I can't do that. I'll default to 1.6. And we're getting a va reference value there with a 50 ohm terminated input on channel 1 of 22.2 nan nanovolts RMS per root hertz. And by the way, that was for a floating input and with uh, DC coupling. Now I'm actually measuring uh, channel 2 here, and you can't just select channel 2, you've got to select uh, dual mode, but uh, there we go. We're getting a little bit higher, but it hasn't done the uh, 100 averages yet. It's a little bit noisier there on channel 2 by the looks of it. 24.56 nanovolts RMS per roots hertz for reference on channel 2 over 1.6 kilohertz span. And that's the figure with a 12.8 kilohertz span. And 100 kilohertz span with 10 kilohertz marker. And by the way, these are all performed with uh, flat top windowing. So I can repeat that, uh, the 100 kilohertz one with a Hanin window. There we go for reference. And that's the 100 hertz response. Once again, a uh, flat top window. And that's the 10 hertz response after only 23 averages because it does take 32 seconds uh, per record length. So it takes quite some time to get to 100 here. That'll probably do. And we've got 163 nanovolts per root hertz at 1 hertz there. Alright, let's see if we can take uh, the channel 1 board out here. So I'm going to have to unscrew these rails here, take off the ribbon cables, and hopefully it'll lift out. But there's got to be a coax going through to the BNC on front panel. So I hope I don't have to uh, take off the front panel and then undo the BNC housing and all that sort of jazz. We'll see. Actually, I don't even think I have to take that board out because this um, shielded top just uh, lifted 
uh, straight off and you can see the shielded can in there but I believe one of those two op amps down there is the front end op amp I can see you probably can't see it down there oh yeah there we go a couple of metal can transistors down in there I believe they're the FET buffer front end um, but I believe one of the first well the first op amp in the chain is one of those puppies and if we have a look at the uh, schematic here of the front end, please excuse the lack of screen capture here. Here's the BNC on the input over here, and uh, then we have all of our read relays to do the various um, AC, DC coupling, shorted out, input uh, test signals, things like that, uh, input attenuation path, uh, input 50 ohm uh, termination down here, and stuff like that. And then it goes into check this out here we go there's our looks like they've got a FET a matched FET um, input buffer there with an unknown op amp doesn't actually have the number on it I kind of assumed it might have maybe been a generic um, uh, NE5534 but uh, I just looked at the number in there and uh, that doesn't look to be the case because there is no bomb here so that's U1 and U2 it's a differential thing so they've got a low and a high uh, FET buffer there so instead of using a FET input op amp they've used a uh, FET um, uh, they've used a matched uh, f matched FET pair on the input and effectively turned it into a FET input uh, op amp because FET input op amps generally have higher uh, input noise uh, voltage density than um, your than your uh, bipolar op amp so um, you know really that's pr that's maybe why they've gone for that FET input I mean I don't know what the state of the art in uh, you know, FET input op amps was back in when this was designed back in the late um, 80s and probably even before that, uh, carry on from uh, previous uh, DSA designs, I'm not sure. Um, because, you know, this isn't one of their oldest DSAs, not by a long uh, stretch. But anyway, um, yeah, so that op amp is probably, you know, as a first guess, without knowing what this transistor is, because as I said, they don't have a uh, bomb for this thing, all they got is a component overlay and nothing's marked on there so uh, we'd have to look at the metal can there to figure out the transistor but probably as a first guess I would say that that op amp maybe dominates um, that in terms of the buffer there and then it goes to the next uh, sheet over here but if we go to our component overlay here's our component overlay and this is what we looked at on the board there here we go, there's our two op amps on the top, U1 and U2, so they're definitely our two op amps. And with inside that front end shielded can there, that is just um, all of your relays, K, okay, there they are. And there's Q1 and Q2, so there's your two matched uh, transistor pairs there. So they're inside the can, so my, uh, that'd be annoying, we have to take the can off probably to see the part number on those suckers. But let's go back to those uh, dip chips there, U1 and U2. And they are not uh, NE5534s. They are a, a Signetics. Um, but what it, you know, it almost looks like a maybe a HP part number on that sucker. We may be able to track that. Um, I think uh, as a first guess, twenty-seven dash oh seven one five. But it's got FGK two five six three on it. That is not familiar at all. You can see the date code there. Uh, first week nineteen ninety. And they've used those also. In a couple of locations, 2563 there and there as well. I don't know where they are in the circuit, but uh, yeah, there's certainly quite a few of them. Ta-da! We have the board out. It wasn't easy to get out, but uh, it did come out. Yeah, no coax. Uses a beautiful little uh, right angle BNC there to connect down to a made in BNC right down the bottom, which then has the coax, which goes to the front. Just beautiful design. Absolutely stunning. I love it. So uh, the high-res photos of this, uh, by the way, will be up on my Flickr account for those interested. Well, actually, it wasn't hard to find out uh, what this mystery labelled chip is. Yes, I was right. It is just a Signetics NE5534 um, classic audio 
op amp. Um, but it's got some weird ass, uh, you know, custom HP part number on it, and it's used all throughout this thing. There's like a dozen of them on this board. Um, I, reason I know that is because that's U4, and we can see U4 on the schematic, and it is one of the rare chips in there that we, is actually labeled NE5534. So it's got to be it. If we just have a quick uh, look at the input front end here, um, nice little uh, Koto relays. I'll have to check out the uh, part number on those, but look at that beastie. That's actually the uh, 50 ohm input terminator. Go figure. And those uh, Kodo Reed relays, of course, Kodo, one of the uh, premium brands in the business, 2900 series Reed relays, exactly what we want. They're uh, hermetically sealed, of course. Epoxy coated shells provides magnetic shielding, optional electrostatic shield to reduce capacitive coupling, and optional coaxial cable uh, shield as well. So, you know, really purpose designed for one of these uh, front ends. It really is quite a nicely laid out board, uh, as you'd expect. Look at the big ground split right down there. Beautiful. I love it how you can see through these uh, old style boards. They're just superb quality. I love them. And yeah, bloody HP part numbers on everything. Real pain in the ass. Look at that. And I count 17 of those uh, Signetics NE5534s double on there. There's a whole stack of them over in this section here. They've almost used those exclusively for the op amps. And there is under the metal shield. And you'll note that, uh, yeah, they've removed the ground plane from under there as well. Uh, and there's our, you know, it's basically all of the input uh, switching. It comes in down the bottom here, of course. And then, uh, so a signal comes in here from the front panel, got our 50 ohm terminators and the relays to switch that on and the relays to ground the input and stuff like that. And then we've basically got our uh, front end stuff in here. This is all our high impedance FET stuff. And then these are our two up, up the top here. They're our first op amps combined with that FET buffer. But it's interesting to note that they actually have um, put the FET inputs under the shield can and haven't put the op amps under there. You'll notice a couple of guard traces going from just directly on the metal can there around probably around the back of the um, input pins to the op amp. And the, both the FETs on the input they've got uh, 550460 labelled on them and a National Semiconductor and another mark on the other side. And there it is National Semiconductor D8952. So I'm not sure what that uh, part number that actually translates to yet. Haven't been able to uh, find anything on that but these um, input op amps definitely um, NE5534 so unless they're really specially uh, selected from Signetics I doubt it because um, this is not a particularly uh, low noise uh, unit by any uh, stretch as we've seen then um, yeah uh, there uh, at one kilohertz I think about uh, three nanovolts per root hertz can certainly get a lot better than that uh, these days in turn like a AD797 or something like that but uh, not really directly pin compatible replacement because there is uh, compensation on those and compensation used on those amps um, which may not be compatible with any replacement chip. You just have to be very careful. So, I don't know. I'm going to have to uh, mull this one over. I haven't got enough time to uh, mull it over today, but uh, it's a shame they're not in uh, sockets, of course. It would have been really easy just to, you know, suck it and see, really. Um, well, I could certainly do that. Suck off the solder and see, no pun intended. Um, it might be worth a uh, try. So, you know, really, the, the input noise is probably going to dominate in the front end here, combination of the uh, FETs plus the op amp, and it's going to be the input uh, current uh, noise as well as the input uh, voltage noise, combination of both, and the whole thing there. Um, so, you know, it might be worthwhile, uh, you know, trying to upgrade this section, see if we can get better performance. So, anyway, if anyone has any... Uh, uh, thoughts on that, please leave it in the comments. Catch you next time.